Yeah. Hello, world. What's up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Hey, believe it or not, back to school season is upon us. And we here at Build have been carving out a little bit of time each week to help you get ready for the year ahead. Now, last week, I chatted with a couple of students on navigating the transition from high school to college life. And this week, I'm joined by a new awesome panel of experts to talk about how to make your new small space your own. Joining me now from Iron Oaks, Sean Belosky is here from Apartment 4. 48 Designs, Raymond Boozer is here, and from Dormify, Stephanie Kimmel's in the building. Everybody make some noise, come on. Let's go. These are your experts right here. Everybody, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for uh, carving out some time to come and hang out with us here on Build. Uh, that's my ride. I'm uh, super excited that you guys are here right now. We're having a lot of fun with these conversations, and uh, to have experts such as yourselves lend your time to talk about this topic, very honored, feel very lucky. I'm very excited to talk to you. First and foremost, how's everybody doing? You doing all right? Great. Awesome, man. Thank doing you good? Doing great. You doing really well? All right, perfect. Busy time of year for you guys at Dormify, any more so than usual? This is the busiest this is it. year for us. And yet here you are with me right now. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for having us. We're going to we're gonna jump in. We'll talk uh, about the whole journey, first steps and all that. But I thought it'd be fun. Do you guys, uh, and Stephanie, keep me honest here, I think your dorm actually inspired your business, but I wanted to see what you guys remember about your first dorm or your first space that you had to fill on your own and what it was like. Do you want to start, Stephanie? Sure. So actually, um, my co-founder and her mom, Karen, were shopping for their Amanda's freshman year dorm room when they came up with the idea for Dormify. I helped them launch the business, but um, Amanda's dorm ended up looking really awesome, but they had to go to, you know, many stores to make that happen. Um, the options that were out there at the time were very juvenile and uh, they were looking for a little bit higher quality and really looking for more um, inspiration and design that Amanda couldn't find. So they came up with the idea of Dormify on that shopping trip, um, and we made it happen. Raymond and Sean, you guys have been working in New York for uh, quite some time now, so you're no stranger to small spaces and making them like the most that they possibly can be. What do you remember about your first small space that you had to fill? Uh, my first small space yeah. was my bedroom at home. Yeah? And it was really small. It was like 10 by 8. That's small. Yeah, so I designed it myself, and I built up a bed and storage underneath, and I covered the whole wall in, like, pieces from pieces of magazine, like a collage, but just, like, cut up, like, puzzles. Yeah. It was pretty crazy. I mean, my parents didn't want to go in there. How old were you when you did that? I was 16. 16, and yeah. you built up your I bed. I was obsessed with design, so it was my first <laughs> foray into it. Once oh, I got to that? college, I was ready for it. Yeah. So you were working on those skills a couple yeah. years before you ever got to the dorm. Yeah. Sean, what about you, man? Uh, my first small space was my bedroom. Yeah. And as a child, I was constantly moving things around to the point my parents were like, what are you doing? Stop moving the things around. <laughs> so when I had the opportunity to go to college and I got to my dorm, my first and only dorm, um, I walked in empty-handed with nothing to decorate my room with. And I'm sitting there. It took about a week for me to really start getting the bearings going. And after... Yeah, about a week or two, I started building things upward, and I turned my bed into its own little loft, but I was using like modular boxes, which were double-sided, that I built myself, and so I stacked the bed on that, turned underneath my bed into a, its own like study quarters, and so as time went on, and the longer I spent in the room, I, everything happened to be closer to the ceiling. <laughs> by you were the destined for Manhattan. Just keep building up. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. how everything works here. Yeah, man. That's pretty cool. Uh, somebody, is that something that you guys get a lot of that people, maybe less nowadays that you've built these tools, but like they'll show up empty handed. They don't know what to expect. They don't know what's waiting for them there. And that's why I think I saw you guys have like a checklist to kind of help people get ready. Is that right? Yeah. So we have a lot of tools on our site that ha help people figure out what they'll need before they get there. Um, but I do think that more and more colleges and universities are actually publishing what their dorm rooms look like. And there's orientation. Um, and a lot of students are learning from students above them what their rooms may look like. So I do think now more than ever, you have a lot more information than you did in the past when going off to school, which just leads people to be able to prepare more and buy everything that they need beforehand. Let's start with that preparation. Before we pack up the, before we do anything, what's the first step 
uh, in getting ready for well, almost for any move, really, but especially when moving into a smaller space? What do you think is the first thing that everybody should have in their mind and where they should begin? Well, I think what you want to do is start decluttering before you leave home. I think you don't want to bring all the crap from your bedroom to a new place. So you just want to think what you really need and bring that stuff with you because it's your opportunity to reinvent yourself. You can start fresh, you know, in a new space and you just bring the essentials and try to tell a new story. Yeah. I always approach every design like project from the point of view of what story do I want to tell? What do I want to say? What do I want people to think about me? And this is a great opportunity because you're moving someplace where nobody knows you. So you can totally reinvent yourself. Yeah. It's a really good point, yeah. Is the decluttering process, have you guys had to declutter throughout your lives multiple times? Has everybody gone through that? It's not an easy thing for me to do. Oh, yeah. I don't consider myself a pack rat, but I have a tough time getting rid of things. Do you have decluttering tips? How do you, how do you know what to get rid of? I think if you haven't worn something or used something in like a month, then I'd say you, arch I, I'd say you archive it. So you give it to your little brother, archive. or you put it someplace where you can always take it back. You know, you put it in the basement. <laughs> your little brother That's what I was going to say. I was going to say the things you're unsure of, give to a friend so you can always take it back. Yeah. But I'm uh, a big fan of decluttering. How many times did you go back to your little brother and take something away that he thought was his? How many I've tried. <laughs> I've tried. You gave this to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I made a mistake or I lost weight. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a reason. Yeah. That's an interesting idea, though. Archiving. I never thought of that. I think also giving to those in need when it comes to clothing, yeah. um, decorative objects, things like that. Um, it's a part of Dormify's mission, and we also encourage our customers to do the same. So I think that makes decluttering easier if you know it's going to a better place. Yeah. And it just it makes sense, too, because like you said, you're reinventing yourself. You don't want to bring everything with you and then have to figure out where all that stuff sort of goes. So you start decluttering, you figure out. Uh, one of the things you mentioned is you like, uh, Raymond, you are saying to tell a story. Yeah, I always so, try to tell a story. How do you figure out, where do you look for inspiration? How do you figure out what that story is going to be? Somebody going uh, into this blank canvas, they get to tell their story. Where, where can they look to yeah, figure out what their story is? I look through going? magazines. I look on Pinterest. When I was going to college, I discovered this magazine called Apartment Life, and it was all about living in New York and apartments, and I got this idea to do, like, modular furniture for my dorm room. So my dorm room was really awesome. I made all these cushions out of, like, foam, and I actually upholstered them myself. Like, I sewed everything by hand. Yes, I did this. <laughs> and I made 12 cushions that could become a sofa, then they become a bed, and you can stack them up, and you can make like a pile of pillows, or you can make like a bed for like a bunch of people to sleep over. And I actually decorated the whole room for like $400. Where did you source all, how, all right, how? How did I source it? How did you do it for $400? It's amazing. I did all the uh, labor myself. So yeah, like okay, the so foam was fun. really cheap, it was like $120, and the fabric was like the other like 200 and the rest of it was just like, you know, thread and pillows and things to like finish it off. Yeah. I was handy when it comes to sewing. I'm not a good like builder like Sean, I can't do construction, but I could sew and I can make things that are malleable, like do what I want them to do. That's so fascinating, that, like Sean, you were literally building stuff for your dorm, I mean, you were literally sewing stuff for your dorm it's just it's funny to me that like that that would later become what you guys do. Yeah. <laughs> it really was a spark yeah. because when other people saw my dorm room they're like, "Oh my god, this is awesome. Can you do it in my dorm room?" And I'm like, "Probably, but I didn't know that was a job." Yeah. So I was doing it for free. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it usually starts. That was a long time ago. What about, um, uh, where would you look for inspiration? Or where would you guide our, our like new students to like, look and get some ideas of like what they might like or what they might be into? So our customers, obviously, Instagram is number one for yeah. where they find inspiration. So we try to be that source on Instagram. Um, and when you're shopping on our site, we actually try to help guide the experience by showing already made up rooms that you can start the shopping process with, although it's not really like a bed in a bag or click and you can yeah. buy the entire room, which you can, but we give the tools to say, here's an idea and um, you can start from there and build sort of off of that look. Yeah. There was a really cool tool I was playing with earlier today. I'm nowhere near moving into a dorm room, but this was just cool anyway. Uh, it's like the make your like the bed yeah, maker or whatever, yeah, where so you can choose new. all your different pillows and like all the different bedding, and like it shows it to you. Did right. you guys just do that recently? Yeah. So yeah. we, with that tool, for example, which is a great example, we give sort of the guidance. We say three pillows, one throw blanket. We have these awesome headboards that you don't need to attach to your bed that kind of adhere to the wall. So you can play around with this tool and add those items, but pick from 
um, all of the products we offer on the site, but we do have a catalog of images for inspiration. You guys, uh, what's a great tool? One of the big parts about moving into a dorm, not just I, like redefining and, and, and sort of rebranding yourself, but uh, is this cohabitation and like having to do this with another person and work together and sort of figure out what you both want that space to look like. You guys are all collaborators. You're all creative people. What are great ways, what are great tools that they can get in touch and start trading ideas and start trading concepts of what they want to see in their space? Sean? Um, I'm all about the modular building for these smaller spaces. So anywhere, anywhere like a big box store such as like Ikea's and things like that where you can actually just buy something very simple at a very affordable price is a great place to start collaborating. And as you start growing together, you find all these different outlets like Dorm 5 and that would be a good one. And just keep moving from there. You ever buy something like uh, at Ikea and then like customize it, like something simple and... I have, yes. Yeah. And I also started, you know when they come with the little dowels? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm gluing them up, I'm clamping them together, I'm making them like more of a sturdy fit rather than like just the Allen key and like the dowel together. Um, I do a lot of custom doors on un units like that. Yeah, a little paint job, a couple, maybe wallpaper the fronts a little bit. Add, you add, wallpapered the front, that's yeah. interesting. Adds a little creative flair yeah, yeah, yeah. to the room. That's a so, great idea. Yeah. yeah. You're welcome, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you can take that one. Do you guys, what about digital tools? Do you ever use stuff like um, like Pinterest or I like whatever? Pinterest, that's where I would say. Yeah. For most of our projects, we always start out with a client like on Pinterest and I pin a bunch of stuff and they're like, I hate that, I like that, I don't like that. You know, and once they like, get rid of the things that they don't like, then they can start pinning things that they like yeah. with the stuff I pin. And once I get the sense of what they want, then I can pin more stuff they like and we narrow it down. It's a really good way to keep everything on track and also keep track of prices and catalog, you know, what's going to happen in each room. That's true. Yeah, for our customer, I mean, we usually suggest picking a unifying color. Um, so if they can agree upon a color, then they can design their sides of the room however they want. But we also have customers who want their room to be exactly matching on both sides to kind of get, I don't know if you guys have seen those viral dorm rooms that um, both sides mirror each other and it looks really awesome. Yeah, but then we also have um, customers who really want to be unique and showcase their own personalities and if they want to coordinate with their roommates, we do suggest a unifying color and then just design from there and it always turns out really great. Talk to me a little bit, Raymond, what are your thoughts on color? Are there colors that you should avoid or colors you shouldn't use? Things that'll make the space look smaller? Things that'll like induce anxiety? Like what, what, yeah, what can we... I don't think there are any colors that you should avoid, but yeah. I think if you want a space to look bigger, you either want to keep it really light or you want to like hide the corners. So you want to use like tone on tone, like gray on gray on gray, or even like black is a good color that hides everything, but it also is very dark. So you can't see the corners, you don't know where the room ends. But white is still the best color to show how big a space is yeah. and then accent with other colors. I think that it's a matter of taste. It's funny how she commented on how you split the room and like have one thing be one side, be like not go to the other side, that would drive me crazy <laughs> because I would want everything to match. Yeah, you like it to be symmetrical. Yeah. Be, yeah, I think it's really important to have some kind of balance to a room, otherwise it's not a room, it's like two rooms. You know, and getting along with other people, I think it's important to compromise. But I, in my dorm, I convinced my roommate I would pay for everything if he would let me do whatever I wanted. <laughs> and that worked. Over there sewing, your roommate wasn't going to argue. They were like, oh, <laughs> yeah. what are you doing? He's like, okay, do it. It's awesome. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what about making, you know, we talk about uh, how using white as a primary color to, to, to make it feel bigger. What, what are other tips to make the space feel bigger than it is? Other uh, pieces that you can put in the room or Don't accents you could Don't put too add? much furniture. Yeah. Minimize. Everything has a function, right? So nothing in the room should be something that doesn't function because it's too small. You know, the coffee table should be storage. You know, the bed is your sofa. You know, pillows go on the bed but not on the floor because it just makes it too crowded. A rug is a way to define a space. Huh. There's a lot you can do. And also cohesiveness in the art. I mean, you see a lot of dorm rooms, they have a lot of posters that are really right. random, but I think you want to pick a theme and just like tell a story. Interesting. That's going to be a tough sell for a lot of people, to, to pick a theme on posters, I think. <laughs> well, yeah, because people like different things, but maybe exactly. the theme is music. Maybe it's music, or maybe it's something like girl power. So then it's like you know, all those things with the quotes and stuff that I love from Dormify. Yeah. Those are really awesome like images that you could like put together and they're all different patterns and colors, but they're still the same story. It's yeah. all text. 
Uh, I promise I won't hold you to this. I won't like hard data, but I'm curious <laughs> if you have like insight as to what is with all the checklists and, and all the, the reminders and cool things you guys have, is there an item that you find is like the most overlooked, something people forget about? Or you or you, or you often see them buying two months later after everyone's bought everything else? Like, oh, people always forget this thing. So I can answer that question in two ways. A lot of people want to see what their closet looks like before they purchase storage items. Um, however, then they show up to school and it's really hard to organize their, all of their stuff in the small closet that doesn't have necessarily built-ins or additional rods. So I think going to school with closet storage is important. Your closet's going to be big enough at least to fit a hanging shelf organizer yeah. or a double rod. Um, and then, you know, the boring stuff like a mattress protector. And when you're really excited about school, you may forget that. So that's where the checklist comes into play. Is it, is it wise, obviously you want to get set up, but is it wise to set yourself up in such a way that maybe you could change it out every once in a while, keep it fresh? Is, is it smart to decorate with the intention of changing things over, the intention of turnover, of getting some new stuff and things of that nature? Or should they try to find what they think is going to be them and like stick to it? How permanent should these decisions be? <laughs> I don't think anything's permanent. I like I that. think that it's a transitory it space. You're going to be there for a semester or two. And then the next year, you're going to be a different person because you're growing and discovering who you are. So you're not going to want that same design. You're going to go back to dormify and get new stuff. You start you over, know? you declutter, you give everything to your little brother. Yeah. You move on, you do <laughs> you it give again. Give it to your little brother and get new stuff. What's your, all right, before we wrap things up, because we're coming uh, into, into the home stretch here, uh, but I want to make sure we cover all the bases. Number one tip that you could think of, if they do nothing else, if they take one thing away from this conversation as they enter their space, what is the most important thing? No pressure. <laughs> Go ahead, guys. For me? <laughs> yeah. I think the main thing that you want to do if you're thinking that you care how things are designed is you want to do repetition. So you want to mm -hmm. triangulate the space and repeat the same color three times or repeat a pattern and a color shape three times. Tell a story by doing something three times. It never fails. We like to see it. People like to see things that make sense. I love that tip. It's called triangulation. That's a. <laughs> it's got a name too. Yeah. Oh, that's I a agree. tough tip to beat. Let's go around. I went to school for design. <laughs> uh, my tip is going to be multi-prong, I guess. But you really want to make your dorm feel like a home away from home and somewhere you, you feel comfortable. Once you move in, you start classes, you're meeting new people. So you're wa you want to feel great in your room. You want to make sure every all of your belongings have a home, so enough storage space so that your room is not cluttered on a regular basis. And you want it to feel like you. So you want it to be well-designed, personal, and for everything to have a home so that you can start and end your day in a great place. A lot of people do the the, store, the loft things. They'll put storage under the beds. They'll find, what's the most creative way you've seen to hide storage, conceal storage, and still be functional? Well, we actually have an extra got? long bed skirt that's designed just for that. So it's a very long bed skirt that's adjustable. So no matter how high you loft your bed, everything can be hidden and your bed actually looks really fabulous with this really beautiful bed skirt and it comes in a ton of colors and works for male and female students. We have black, we have gray, white. So that's a great way to hide stuff under your bed. Cool. What do you think of a storage ottoman? What do you think of that? No. We're onto something. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but like, could you, uh, have you ever seen something like that where like a, a chair or something that doubles as like a storage chest and a thing of that nature? I feel like the, one of the big keys is, is multifunction, is everything does more than one purpose. It does as much as it possibly can. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Things should be multifunctional. Got it. Is that the and kind like of stuff you were building? Everything should be out of the way so there's not so much clutter. I love the idea of the adjustable skirt, the adjustable bed skirt there that hides that. Uh, yeah, I didn't even know that existed. That's, that's pretty interesting. We yeah. created it. Right. <laughs> Check well, it out. Well, yeah. Well um, got a big tip? Better than Raymond's? Uh, number one. <laughs> no, not better than Raymond's. But <laughs> <laughs> number one, get a plant. I'm all about having a little bit of ask life. about that, yeah. Yeah, I'm all about having a little bit of life in the room. And it adds a little green, which is a natural color. And um, oh, express yourself. Make yourself comfortable. This is your living space, so do what you feel is going to suit you the best by the end of the day. What's your stance on fake plants? I'm okay with a fake plant. Yeah? It doesn't look like a fake plant. I, I think that's what everybody wants, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. All right, so we're pro-fake plants, as long as they look real. As long as they look real. 
we got a brand new giant bed skirt that hides. All of your clutter <laughs> is adjustable. And what was your triangulation? No, trifecta? Yeah, triangulation. Oh, triangulation. Repetition and, repetition and basically yeah. the same thing. Those are the big takeaways. Yeah. Um, I'm getting the signal from Kate over here. We got to just about wrap things up. I told you it's going to fly by. But I uh, sincerely thank you to all of you for, for taking time out of your super busy schedules to come and talk about this stuff. For a lot of people, uh, it's exciting. It's a very scary time. And hopefully your insights will help guide them uh, to make some great decisions and set up some really cool spaces. Uh, everybody, once again, please do me a huge favor. Make a ridiculous amount of noise and join me in thanking Sean Belaski for being here, Raymond Boozer and Stephanie Kimmel. Check thank out you. Dormify. Get that bed skirt. Thank <laughs> you.